This is a message to all the straight white males out there. I'm referring to you, yes. The evil monster that you are. The presumed to be misogynistic, rapist, you colonizer. I mean, every name in the book that can be thrown at you. I've got a message to you. We are in the beautiful English forest. And once we get to camp, I'll have a conversation with you to try to fix you. So I've been thinking a lot about that, about how now we are the enemy and we somehow have to apologize for our existence, almost be asked for forgiveness and for crimes that we haven't even committed yet. And I think, let me see where I can go. I think that we have to do something about it. I'm gonna try to find somewhere beautiful to camp. This tree is beautiful. But I'm gonna keep looking for somewhere to camp. So all done, I'm sweating like a pig. The tent set up. Now I'm gonna inflate the mattress, put the sleeping bag in, put the pillow in, and I'm gonna chillax, make a coffee and wind down. And we'll speak then, cause I've got a lot to say. And I really wanted to speak with you. And I have a message, more likely. <sighs> Coffee's made, we're somewhere in the English forest. Tent set up. And I wanted to speak with you about the straight white males out there, which I'm a part of. And what I wanted to speak about is, if you're a straight white male, what are you going to do about it? Are you gonna prove them wrong? Are you gonna prove them that you matter, that you're not a bad person, that what you do is not motivated by any toxicity whatsoever? Are you gonna to prove to them that your intentions are good, your heart's pure, and that you have nothing to do with anything remotely toxic. Because right now, society, modern society, sees you as the enemy. You have to be deconstructed. You have to step aside so that other people more deserving in the eyes of God knows who, has to come before you. And that can be de demotivating. Obviously, it can be demotivating, but you have to prove them wrong. You have to show that even though that's how society sees you, even though that if you're a straight white male, society sees you as the enemy, you prove them wrong. You go out there and you make something of yourself. You do something that's worthwhile. You're a good person, you serve the community, you do positive. That's what, that's what society needs right now from men, from straight white men, from straight toxic white men. They, society needs those men to prove that they are invaluable and worthy members of society. That their contributions are incalculable that without them, society would stop in two days. Which is actually true, by the way. Was it ever, was it ever any other way? I don't think it was. I think it never has been different. I think before, people knew. Women knew, men knew, straight white men knew that their contribution was incalculable to society. But we've forgotten about that that invisible army of men who make the world go round. In what world did we start to call them toxic? It's, it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. So don't hide, don't hide 
in video games. Don't hide in meaningless pleasure that will actually prove those people that call you toxic right. Prove them wrong. Prove them that you take care of yourself. Prove them that you go to the gym. Prove them that you are as healthy as you can be, that you eat healthy foods, that you help other people every time you, got a, you get a chance, that, you're res, you're res, that you respect women always. Because if all the straight white men start to do that, which most of them already do, but some of them don't, and if all of them would start to prove them wrong, what then? What, what will they say about us? Where will the toxicity be? Maybe it's a pipe dream and maybe I'm sleeping in my laurels here thinking that that's going to happen. But I think it is starting to happen. I think people are starting to change and to shift. So I think it's beautiful how men are starting to become more connected, more together, more and more men are speaking out about this stuff. And I think that's how it should be. We should connect and be together again to prove those people that call us toxic, that call us, that we're one step away from being rapists, that we're all misogynistic, that we have internalized misogyny so much that we don't even see it. I don't know. You figure how that works. But we need to prove them wrong. I don't know, I'm rambling in a forest. Maybe I'm making no sense, but I think I do make some, this of some dogs run in. Oh no, it's not a dog, it's a deer. It was actually a deer. I just saw a deer running like crazy up to where I was, turning around and then running the other way. That, this was a very good moment that I'm sharing with you. I didn't record it, but that was something. So yeah, start to prove them wrong. Start to take care of yourself as you've never done before. And let's just accept something. Being fat is not a good thing. Being fat is actually really bad for your health. And even me, I've started to let go of myself a bit and the belly is starting to show up. Well, I need to work harder. I need to go to the gym. I need to take care of myself more, you know? That sugar, I've been eating too much of the sugar lately and I have to stop. I have to, I have to do everything that I can so that I'm as healthy as I can be, so I can be of service to my family, to the community, in any way I can. And that means that I have to be healthy. That means that I have to take responsibility for every action that I make, good and bad. Like the gym, I need to start going to the gym. I've let, my, I've let myself go. And no, it's not good to be fat. It's not good to have a bit of a belly. You, you wouldn't consider myself fat. You wouldn't say I'm obese. So what? I'm not as healthy as I can be. I'm not as athletic as I can be. So I need to work harder. So I'm just the best man that I can be. And in my mind, that just makes perfect logical sense. In what world, letting yourself go and being as fat as you can be is considered healthy, is considered good, is considered that people should accept you for how you are. Okay, I, I get that to a point. Yes, people have to accept you how you are. But if how you are is not the best you can be, then no. You have to do the best you can, always, no matter how hard it is. I can see the deer again running that way. I'm just looking at them. But there's two of them. And we all make mistakes. We all sometimes don't do what we have to do. We all not step up to the responsibilities that we have to. But that's life. We all do those things, everyone. 
and even the virtue signaling people that the goody two shoes that think that they never can do no wrong, they make mistakes also. They make massive mistakes in their lives, like everyone else. And they're not what they should be. They, there's always somewhere you can find in your life something that you should improve and that you have to improve it. And you just do it. Whatever it is. I don't know. I'm rambling and I don't know if I'm making much sense. I hope that I am. It's getting kind of dark, as you can tell. I'm just gonna go to bed as soon as the fire goes out. And tomorrow's another day, because it's only like half past eight, but it's already very dark. It's been a good night overall. I did wake up a few times. I don't know why, but I did wake up a few times during the night. It was a bit cold to be honest and I didn't close the sleeping bag, I used it as a quilt. It got colder than I thought it was going to, but with the sleeping bag I was perfectly fine. I'll leave a link in the description below, it's a down sleeping bag, cheap down sleeping bag but very good. So yeah, I'm just waiting for the condensation to, to dry up a bit and let me show you where I am. So this is where I chose to set up camp, underneath this tree. It seemed like a good place as any. And we're in the English forest. The place is beautiful, very calm, except now in the morning that I can hear that machine going on. We're surrounded by nature and this is where we cooked, where I made my coffee, when I, where I had my dinner, I was sitting here making the fires, I uh, boiled the water here, and yeah, this is where we're camped, just waiting for the condensation, let me show you, there's quite a bit of condensation to be honest. Even I could feel it inside the tent, touching that side. Let me show you my setup. Here it is. This is a Trecology sleeping pad. A OEX sleeping bag. And a nature hike or something like that pillow. It's kind of dark in there. Let me turn on the light. Yeah, you get the picture. But it, there is quite a bit of condensation. Look at that. There is quite a bit of condensation. So I'm just trying for that to dry out a bit because it's really, really wet. So I opened it and I'm waiting for it to dry out a bit because it is quite wet. So I'm just waiting for that. So yeah, don't be scared to go out and go wild camping. I did wait, so I did walk. I'm walking a bit further every time because I haven't wild camped a lot during my life. I've been camping many, many times, but not wild camping. So I'm not doing like big hikes. I did walk for like an hour maybe, but it's not that much. And I'm going further and further each time I come out. So yeah. It's been quite the experience, to be honest. And it was a bit colder. T tonight was a bit cold. And um, I don't know why I was afraid that the water, the condensation was getting in the tent, so I kept touching the sides, because they seem not wet, but like damp. But yeah, I'll be packing up in no time and on the go. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And like always, see you in the next one.